What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 22nd jailbreak update video. And this week's been pretty interesting. So in this video, we're gonna be talking more about Cydia Extender just because it's so big right now. And there's so many questions surrounding it. Luca Tedesco's solution to the seven day signing of Yalu. Another substrate fix for the mock portal jailbreak on the iPhone 7, some new tweaks and more. And as usual, if you haven't watched the previous jailbreak update videos, I urge you to go back and watch at least the past two or three before watching this video, just so you get to know, you know everything I'm talking about, just so you're in the know with everything I'm talking about today. And I have a playlist full of all 22 of these videos and I will have that in the description just for easy access. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. So we talked extensively and almost exclusively about Cydia Extender in the last jailbreak update video, but there's still been a lot more that has developed since that release. So if you've been under a rock for the past week, week and a half, Cydia Extender allows you to essentially get Yalu on your device permanently. And it also doesn't require a computer. So you basically just download the Yalu IPA from your device itself, and then you can re-sign it on the device yourself as well. No need for a computer or anything like that. So it's a pretty good solution, but it's still not Sorik's permanent solution that he's talked about. And also if you missed it, I made a fix for City Extender error. So if you've used City Extender and you're getting errors, make sure you go back and watch the fix video just so you can kind of fix some of those errors you may be encountering. Now, I don't want to talk about the default City Extender. I want to talk about a new package called Extender with a three. So when I made that tutorial for City Extender last week, I told you guys about an optional package that you could install called Extend Life. And this came from Julio from the Zero repo. This basically just added extra functionality to the City Extender application. So it'll give you like more tabs at the bottom. You could download Load IPAs, you could resign and revoke the applications from your device. So you didn't have to plug your device into the computer to revoke the certificates. And it also allowed you to auto sign the IPAs after seven days instead of manually having to do so. Well, the developer of the City Extender installer, which I showed you guys in that tutorial, actually liked this idea so much that he created a new version of the Extender installer called City Extender Plus. And this Plus version basically allowed you to do everything that this Extend Life tweak from Julio allowed you to do. It basically allowed you to revoke from the application, it allowed you to auto sign after seven days and so everything seemed good you know everybody was excited for it but within the first 30 minutes of it actually going live on his repo people installed it and instantly got into a boot loop so after only 30 minutes of putting it on his repo he had to pull it and help these people out that got into a boot loop some of them could not fix it now this had something to do with AppSync, not the actual installer itself but still pretty unfortunate now fast forward a couple days later julio actually released a new package on his repo called extender with a three and this is basically extend life 2.0 so it's basically just a supercharged version of city extender so of course this tweak allows you to auto sign the Yalu IPA after seven days. So this means you won't have to manually download and reinstall the certificate every seven days from your device. This will do it for you automatically. You also don't have to worry about VPN with this tweak. And of course it has the built-in revoke certificate option. Now I've had a lot of people ask me, should I install this? And my answer has been the same. It's your call. If you're perfectly fine with re-signing the application every seven days manually, then I would not bother with this tweak. However, if re-signing every seven days is too time consuming for you, or you just you know think you're gonna forget after seven days and reboot and lose your jailbreak or something like that, then yeah, I'd go ahead and install this tweak. However, as I've said all along, I would use caution anytime you enter your credentials into a third party tool. If you don't feel safe at any time, you could just make a new Apple ID and use that specifically for re-signing your applications. This is actually a good idea and I've seen some people do it. And of course I will have the repo and everything you need to know about this extender this modified version of extender in the description below now let's talk about Luca Tedesco's seven day signing solution for Yalu so Luca Tedesco came out of nowhere on Twitter a couple days ago saying that the Yalu jailbreak may receive the same jailbreak me treatment that iOS 9.3 did meaning that we could just have to go to his website to re jailbreak our devices just like we did with the Pangu iOS 9 jailbreak obviously making the Yalu jailbreak permanent and not having to rely on a certificate he also went on to confirm that he was in fact Sorok's mystery man who Sorek referred to as Voldemort as we talked about in the past few jailbreak update episodes. So all was good and the whole jailbreak community was excited until later that night when Luca revealed that he forgot Yalu's kernel exploit must run as 32-bit making the jailbreak me process pretty much useless. So unfortunately we won't get a jailbreak me style uh, you know solution to the seven day signing but we're still going to get some sort of solution from either Luca or Sorek. But of course until then if you don't have constant access to a computer just go ahead and install the extender again i made a video on that now let's talk about the new substrate fix for the mock portal jailbreak for the iphone 7s so a couple days ago a developer released what seems to be a real solution to the substrate issue and many users have actually reported that their iphone 7 and 7 pluses are a lot more stable when using this substrate fix now this package does not edit any files so it should be pretty safe and add a lot of stability to your iphone 7 and 7 plus running on ios 10 through 10.1.1 
running the mock portal jailbreak. Now, of course, this won't impact anybody that's not using an iPhone 7. I will have full instructions and the repo for that substrate fix down in the description below. And if you're gonna install this, I would also remove any other substrate fix that you may have installed in the past. However, one thing that still has not been fixed with the mock portal jailbreak is backboard. So if you wanna respring properly, just continue using Cydia respring fix until it does get fixed eventually. And as I usually do in these videos, let's talk about a few new tweaks from this past week. So the first one is one that I've talked about in the past already, but still, I'm just excited for this one. It's Don't Stop the Party 2, which allows you to respring with music still playing in the background. So basically, if you have music playing and then your device respring's, it'll continue playing while your device is essentially off and going through the whole respring process. Pulse HUD is another cool tweak that just got released recently, and it's a volume HUD tweak that uses pulses instead of bars. It's really hard to explain, but it's a really cool tweak. Another cool one that's actually a flex patch is called Messages Send Progress Bar, and this just brings back the Send Progress Bar for messages. And the last tweak I want to mention is called Moose, and this allows you to set custom text selection highlight color, which is pretty cool. I'm surprised this hasn't been implemented before. So I talked about all of these in the live stream on Friday, but if you missed it, I just wanted to reiterate it for this video. And finally, I want to end this episode with some humor. So a Reddit user posted a question asking why his Facebook icon is a bowl of spaghetti. It seemed odd and just weird. You know, I didn't know it was going to be funny or anything, but when I looked at the picture, when I saw this, I just started dying laughing. I don't know why or how or why I mean I just don't understand why this is so funny to me but it just cracked me up and a lot of users on Reddit as well. So I hope you found some humor in this picture because I just laugh every time I see it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of these videos all the time, almost every week now. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.